Hi, in this discussion, we'll be talking about mean of group data. In particular, we'll be discussing how to use the long method and the deviation method. And this will be our group data. We have five class interval with its respective frequency. And the total frequency is 163. Let's start with the first method. This is the formula. The symbol is x bar is equal to the quotient of the summation of fx and capital N, where f is the frequency as provided in this column, and x would be the class mark. This is the midpoint of every class interval, so we need to place column x. Again, this is the midpoint of every class interval, and to solve for that, that would be equals the average. So we simply type average, and then followed by open parenthesis and we highlight the location of the lower and the upper limit that would be from column b4 up to column d row 4 press enter and we have a midpoint that would be 77 and then when you drag this formula placed on this cell since i'm working with a spreadsheet this will be the result so that for the last class interval the midpoint is 97 followed by the second to the last class interval is 92 and we have an 87 for this class interval and then 82 for this class interval now I think we're ready to start using the formula for long method so on my solution area I need to get the value for the summation of the product of the frequency and the class mark and then capital N as the summation of F or frequency and of course we take the mean by taking the quotient of this two values. So to take the summation of the product of f and x, we need a column for f and x, meaning we multiply the frequency and the midpoint. So for the first class interval, this will be the product of 54 and 77. So on our formula, this equals 54 asterisk, and we click this value. So the location of 54 is column E, row 4, and then the location of 77 is column G, row 4. Press enter, and the result is 4,158. And when I drag this formula, or simply copy it to the remaining class interval, the product is also computed. So say, for example, 10 times 97, that is 970. 15 times 92 is 1,380. It goes for the rest. I need the sum of these values. So this is equals SUM, open parenthesis, and I highlight this five products. That would be from row 4 to row 8 of column H. And then press enter. The sum is 13,576. So on my solution area, this is my numerator, the summation of FX then my denominator would be 163 and using my spreadsheet formula this would be equals the numerator divided by the denominator located on column D row 12 press enter and my mean is 83.29 so when you use manual solution or your calculator it's pretty much the same it's simply the quotient of the summation of the product of F and X and the summation of F so we are done with the first method, long method. Now let's take a look at deviation method. This is the formula. We have x bar or mean is equal to capital A plus the product of I and the quotient of the summation of FD over N. Where A is defined as the assumed mean. This is actually the first step in using the deviation method. We need to assume the mean and we choose it from this column, the midpoint. So in this example, you have five choices on which mean to assume. F is still defined as the frequency. D is the deviation from A. I is the class size. And N is the summation of F. So let's go to our solution area. In our solution, we'll only need four variables. And this would be the assumed mean. This would be the summation of the product of F and D. Capital N or the summation of F and class size. So to start with this method, we choose our assumed mean. And again, the choices would be coming from this column, the midpoint. So say, for example, I'd like to choose my assumed mean as, say, 87. A little higher from my computed mean. 
So let me write that down. That would be my assumed mean 87. Now to get the value of the summation of the product of f and d, we need a column d. So that if we multiply this column f and this column d, we can have the product of f and d. But what is column d? If we go back to our definition, d is the deviation from a, and a is our assumed mean. So if we go back to our group data, this is the location of our assumed mean on this row and on this class interval. So that on our column D, that's the deviation from A, this is our starting point indicated by 0. And now we take the deviation from A, so going up would be minus 1, and this one would be minus 2. Below 0 would be plus 1, and then this would be plus 2. As you can see, the deviation on this column is in ascending order because the class interval is also in an ascending order. If this class interval is in descending order, then this deviation should also be in descending order. Since column D is now complete, we now take the product of the frequency and the deviation from A. So on our spreadsheet formula, or you can also use your calculator, this would be equals this cell. That's the frequency multiplied to this cell. So just to check, you have E4, that's column E, row 4, multiplied to column I, row 4. So press enter. The resulting product is negative 108. So when I copy this formula to the other class interval, the product is also computed. So say for example, I have 10 times 2, that's 20. That's correct. 15 times 1 is 15. 36 times 0 is 0 and 48 times negative 1 is negative 48. What I actually need here is the sum of this 5 product. So this is equals sum open parenthesis. I highlight this 5 products then press enter. The resulting sum is negative 121. So this is the value I'll place on my solution area. The summation of FD is negative 121. Now I need the value for capital N. This is the summation of the frequency. And I also need the value for class size. In taking the class size, you simply count the number of members per group. So say for example, for this class interval, I have 75, 76, 77, 78, and 79. These are the members of the first group or the first class interval. So if you count these members, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then the class size is 5. Or there's another way of looking for the class size. You just need to choose two consecutive upper limit or two consecutive lower limits and take the difference. So say for example, this would be equals, let me choose this upper limits 89 and 94. I'll take the difference, so that's 94 minus 89 and then press enter and I still have the class size 5. So to start computing for the mean using deviation method, this will be my guide. So I'll start by pressing equal sign and then my capital A is located here. Then I have a plus sign and then this is in grouping so I'll place that in open and close parenthesis and then multiply to class size so that would be asterisk class size is located here. This grouping here is the quotient of the summation of FD and capital N. So I have here a numerator of summation of FD. The location is H12. I can also type it down. H12. Then I have the vision symbol. That's forward slash. And then my capital N located here. So I have placed the values of the variables indicated in the formula. Column H, row 11, is the location of my assumed mean. And then I have a grouping symbol multiplied to the class size located in column K, row 12. And then in this grouping, I have a numerator, the summation of FD, and my summation of F. So when I press enter, notice that it should be the same result with the first method. So that it should also be 83.23. So regardless of which method you use, the result should be the same. And for deviation method, regardless of what assumed mean you choose, it should still result to 83.29. So this is mean of group data, long method, and deviation method. Thanks for watching.